What's going on, everyone? Once again, I have another fantastic scientist who has been doing research with the Navy and the Marine Corps to introduce you to. And she's really cool. And guess what? She lives in Alaska. That's freaking awesome. So I have got Channing Bolt. Channing, how's it going? Good. How are you? I'm super pumped to be talking to you. <laughs> wow, thanks. <laughs> you do some really cool stuff that I really hope people like. And I'm excited to learn more about. Awesome. Well, let's get into it. <laughs> Fantastic. So Channing here. Channing, you are uh, in Fairbanks, Alaska. You're mm -hmm. currently in a school program with a SMART scholarship. Correct. Um, something with the government. Can you kind of help us understand a little bit about the SMART scholarship and then kind of about who you are? Right. Uh, well, again, my name's Channing Bolt, and I'm a PhD candidate at the University of Alaska Fairbanks. I study chemical oceanography, and right now I am funded by the SMART Scholarship. So that stands for the Science, Mathematics, and Research for Transformation Scholarship. And so the idea of this scholarship is that uh, they cover four years of my tuition and fees, and okay. that includes a stipend as well. And then I get to, and so I have a sponsoring facility that's paying for this. And then my, I get, I get a position with my sponsoring facility once I graduate. And that's so, we do. yeah, yeah, it's, it's awesome. I have my PhD covered and a guaranteed job once I graduate. So it's, it's a really awesome program and I, I've been extremely happy with it and very fortunate to have received it. That is great. And you, you've also done some other previous work with the, Navy Marine Corps through research, correct? Correct. So during my undergrad, I went to, I got a bachelor's from Humboldt State in oceanography and chemistry. And during this time, I worked in an environmental lab in San Diego through the Naval Research Enterprise Internship Program. It's Woo, that's a lot of words. It's a lot of words. It's called, for short, it's NREAP. Okay. And so I interned for four years and uh, I got, it, that kind of really solidified where I wanted to go with my PhD. Um, mm. I got to work in an environmental lab and I really got to explore more of like, you know, there's chemical oceanography and then there's all these fields within that field. So I got to be exposed to more of the scope of chemical oceanography. And um, that's where I actually worked in a trace metal lab. And it okay. kind of solidified my choice to pursue a career and a PhD in trace metals. Okay. So let's talk about, you weren't, all, you're a chemical oceanographer. You weren't that at five years old. No. Um, what, what made you get it? Like, what were you like, I want to study oceans or like, how did you get there from a kid to, I mean, you kind of explained your journey a little bit, but. Yeah. So when I was a kid, I grew up in the Pacific Northwest and I actually had this like crazy obsession with orca whales okay. and I really wanted to go into marine biology and study orca whales and I you know I wanted to be a sea world trainer like all right yeah. and then um as, as I got older I was more I became more and more curious about the ocean itself and I just remember like being on a walk with my dad and being like what's it called what who are the scientists that study the ocean and he said an oceanographer and I was like I think I want to do that and uh yeah, and then I started, uh, in high school, I started volunteering at the Scripps Institute of Oceanography. They have an aquarium there. Very cool. So I was a tide pool interpreter, and uh, yeah, I just tried to become more involved in oceanography. I joined an oceanography club, and yeah, I just kind of fell in love with the study. And then the chemistry part came also in high school when I, uh, I, I really enjoyed chemistry classes. And oceanography is really cool where you have different branches. So yeah. you have to have a background in geology, physics, uh, chemistry, wow. and um, biology. And it's really nice because it's such a diverse field and it kind of connects all, all of these STEM, wow. all of these STEM topics sort of connect into one thing. So you, it, it's- You speak a lot of science. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's a yeah. lot of different kinds of science. Yeah. <laughs> Very cool. So let's talk about what, what are you up to right now as, or what's going on in the oceanographer world? Yeah. So what I'm up to right now is I'm currently working on a thesis. So I just submitted my first paper 
which was on trace metal distributions. And for those of you that don't know, and trace metal kind of sounds like an intimidating word, but it's okay. It's, I, I don't know. So it's yeah. <laughs> Uh, metals exist in the ocean in really small concentrations. So when I refer to trace metals, that's what I'm talking about. Okay. Um, yeah. So my first paper looked at trace metal distributions in sea ice. Um, and then my, the rest of my um, thesis will look at trace metal distributions in the Arctic Ocean to look more at, um, to kind of address this gap in knowledge of, in circulation, especially yeah. in the east, especially along the Siberian Arctic. Okay. That's very cool. I had no idea there was metal in the, the ocean. Yeah. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, besides the pop cans that people throw in the ocean. Yeah. <laughs> that, that's a little different, but yeah. okay. And so how have you kind of applied that to the work that you've done with or seen with like the Navy and the Marine Corps? <clears throat> yeah. So a lot of my work with the Navy was sort of, um, it's really broad. I think that's one of my favorite parts about working for the Navy is that every day is a little different. Um, you're working on like four different projects and it, it yes. keeps things from becoming mundane and boring. It, you know, every day is something new. And so sometimes we're working on envir um, environmental compliance. So uh, yeah, so shoreline operations, they have to have a certain, you know, they have to be regulated and you know they can't be putting a bunch of contaminants in these in these harbors so yeah. our job is to make sure that they're complying with uh, regulations and that they're also using best management practices so they're not you know making sure that all of our practices are up to date and you know keeping as many as much heavy metals and stuff out of the out of the shoreline operations as possible and then, you know, another project, my favorite project I worked on was um, we helped uh, develop this water treatment system. And Ooh. so we wanted this water treatment system to be compact. So we wanted, the idea was that it could, you could wear it on your back like a backpack and that you could That's put it into a dirty water source and it would come out clean. And so my job with this was to make sure it was just to test it. So like mm -hmm. how, how well did it filter out metals and how well did it, you know, at, at what concentrations could you spike this water? So add a bunch of heavy metals and how well did it clean them out? Um, what was the voltage? Just like how, how often do you have to filter it? So that was kind of my job role there. Okay. Um, yeah. And so let me, let me ask if so, for a layman person like me that knows very little about water filtration, is how does that compare to like the Camelback water filter I can buy at the camping store? Um, is it, I mean, yours is probably a lot more advanced. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, the Camelback thing that you buy at the store, that's not gonna filter out metals. Metals are, especially dissolved metals are quite, they just can't be really, you're not gonna be able to filter out. So it uses what's called deionization Okay. to remove these metals um so that's how it's different and the whole idea is that it's, it's drinkable and that you know yeah. you have this really compact small water treatment um that takes very little energy because out in the field an energy source is is an issue um yeah so yeah that was my that was another favorite project i worked on and that yeah, that's so awesome it, the thing i love about that the most is I love drinking water that doesn't have metal in it. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I think a lot of people do. <laughs> that's just so. I'm, I'm glad people like you are working on that because I'm. I prefer not having tons of metal in my body. Yeah. <laughs> so, where where do you kind of see the science going? Yeah. Well, so I I really wanted to become involved in Arctic research. Um, you know, you, as you've probably heard, the Arctic's kind of a hot topic right now, yeah. um, especially cold, in the science cold topic world. or hot topic? <laughs> well, getting warmer. <laughs> 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 um, so I, I really wanted to become involved with that. And uh, I, I mean, my, my hope is to also bring my, you know, bring this, I just got this, you know, I'm getting this PhD in Arctic research and I really hope yeah, to bring sure. that, um, to the Navy and start working more um, with the Navy in the Arctic region. Uh, as sea ice recedes, you're going to be opening up a lot of navigation pathways, potential resources. And so it's going to become more of a, I think, a dynamic region. 
and I think it's going to become, you know, as these navigation pathways open and as like we're seeing all these changes, I think that the Navy is going to have more and more interest in that area. Okay. And just kind of, you know, getting more involved in research in the Arctic. Yeah. So from your perspective, why, like, why does that matter? Why is it important to care about what's happening in the Arctic? And, and not like the political reasons, but just from a science perspective, why does it matter to you? I mean, I think that the thing about being a scientist is that you're curious. Um, yeah. And I'm so curious about the Arctic in general. Like, why, why are we seeing what we're seeing? Um, what's happening? And, you know, there's so little, you know, as, as much as the Arctic is talked about, there's just very little research in this area because of the, the, the it's hard to access. So you have all these accessibility issues where if you know if you want to go study sea ice, you're going to need to be on an icebreaker or a helicopter, and it's just it's a bit of a logistical nightmare um, yeah. getting up there. So, and I think that you know as we've seen these changes, there's just this huge push, and you know people are realizing that there's this huge gap in knowledge, and we're trying to um, you know we're trying to fill that gap and like best understand what's happening and why it's happening. Yeah. And I think that's what's most important to me is just understanding why we're seeing the changes we're seeing. It's, it's just, it's a giant puzzle and I want to solve, like I want to help solve it and I want to do my part in better understanding it. That's incredible. That's fantastic. I got to ask. So if you're doing Arctic research, do you ever go like up to the Arctic and hang out in like a hut? <laughs> Well, uh, I don't, but I mean, okay. there are people that do. Um, okay. So what I've done is I actually, so in 2018, I went on a Russian icebreaker. So I mm -hmm. flew to Kirkenes, Norway, and then we took a Russian icebreaker to Arkhangelsk, Russia, and then we left from there to the Siberian Arctic. So I got to spend two months on a Russian icebreaker, um, and it was a really interesting and fun experience. Um, I got to walk on sea ice and- uh, Ooh, that's cool. Yeah, it was really, really cool. What, uh, what, so what, icebreaker, I mean, that's not something people like, uh, can I get one ticket for this icebreaker, please? How do you, like, what's it like being on an icebreaker? It's a bit surreal. Okay. Um, yeah, I mean, you're just, you're up in the Arctic and I mean, I'm, I'm gonna sound like a nerd, but like ice itself is just so beautiful. And to like watch this ship, you know, the way that an icebreaker works is they they ram they ram the ice. So okay. you know, you're just experiencing this like you know traveling through sea ice, and it, it's just it's incredible. Um, don't don't ever apologize for sounding like a nerd. <laughs> We're talking about science. Let's yeah. Just why? <laughs> Like you should represent the ice. Yeah. Yeah. It's just, it's breathtaking. It, it's so beautiful. And like, you know, That's to be amazing. on this icebreaker and just like breaking through this ice and just to see, you know, ice just coming up all around the ship. Oh, it's, that it's is cool. pretty cool. That is, that is cool. All, well, now that we're like super good friends for like the last 12 minutes, <laughs> I'll have to like use you to get me on an icebreaker one day or something. <laughs> You got to get involved in Arctic research. <laughs> there we go. I'm, I'm not, I, I love the cold, but I don't know. What am I going to do? Talk to it? <laughs> I, I, I do some sweet, sweet dance moves, some Arctic <laughs> dance moves, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> I'll, I'll leave, I'll leave the Arctic research to the professionals like yourself. <laughs> so Channing, is there anything else you want people to know about the science and what you're up to? Oh, uh, man, I, I think that, you know, a really important thing, you know, I'm kind of a, a young, early career person. And mm -hmm. I think that, I guess what I would want people to know about science is that it's, it, it's, it can be intimidating. And I think even some of the things, even just the words that I said can sound intimidating, but I think it's important to be bold and to, to, you know, take chances. Um, I think that's kind of my, my two cents, but yeah. Yeah, and just with as far as the research I'm doing, um, I am pretty excited for my future. Um, I'm really excited to be joining the Navy as part of this with the SMART scholarship, and I'm excited to see where you know life takes me. Um, 
hopefully can continue to be involved in the Arctic research. And I'm excited to take on the projects at, in, you know, in the lab in San Diego. Um, yeah. That's, that's awesome, Channing. Well, I really appreciate kind of having you on and thanks for joining. Yeah, thanks for having me. Yeah, so you heard it there. Do you want to do oceanographer? I don't know. I don't. Even, I barely know what that is. But I tell you what, you know who does know is Channing. So if you're interested in this kind of thing, you could talk to her. Or what we want to know, as you know, how many times can I say the word no? You never know. What we <laughs> want to know is where do you think is about Channing, what she's working on, the science she's involved in, the ocean. Who knew metals were in the water? <laughs> That's bananas. I didn't know. You probably knew because you're like smart scholar students, but this guy, I didn't know. So really excited to see and hear what you guys have to say about where you think this science is now and where it's going in the future. So thanks for tuning in and have an awesome day.